Oh, Sly, what have you done? I used to love you like some kind of crazy, roided up, monosyllabic granddad. You've delivered some of the greatest cinematic moments of my life. Whether it's Rocky bravely struggling to his feet to go one more round, Rambo venting a lifetime of rage against a bunch of helpless computer consoles, or John Spartan kicking Wesley Snipes' fucking head off. Your movies practically defined an entire generation. There's no denying that you're one of the greatest actors heroes the world has ever known. But son, you done fucked up with this one. You know, it gives me no pleasure to make this video. I don't enjoy tearing down things I used to love, but make it I must, because I want everyone else to share my pain. Yeah, I went and saw Rambo Last Blood the other night, defying the critics who declared it to be the biggest pile of shit since the last Transformers movie. Now, generally I think of such people as insufferably smug, soy-infused social activists who rate movies based on their politics rather than their objective quality, and who wouldn't know a good action movie if it blew its considerable load all over their collective faces. But in this case, I'm gonna have to agree with their assessment, and that makes me angry. Last Blood sucks. It doesn't suck for the bullshit reasons most of them claim, but it does suck all the same. Now to fully explain why, I have to put this movie into some kind of context. Allow me to elaborate. As much as Rocky gave Sylvester Stallone the big break he'd always been looking for, it was a traumatised Vietnam vet named Rambo who brings a forgotten war back to small town America that really launched his career as an action star. First Blood was a runaway success that kicked off an entire franchise of movies, each one more extreme and action-packed than the last. <sighs> Ooh, that one didn't age well. The very name Rambo became synonymous with over-the-top action and beefed up shirtless dudes mowing down wave after wave of disposable bad guys in increasingly creative and destructive ways. Shit man, even Arnold got in on the act. The Rambo franchise was loud, it was violent, it was explosive, it was dumb, and it was fucking awesome. It even spawned a children's cartoon based on a bunch of R-rated action movies. Kids were hardcore back in the 80s, man. But all good things must come to an end. Much like Rocky, Stallone left the character behind in the 1990s as he tried to transition into more diverse roles with mixed results. And just like Rocky, he decided to revisit the character one more time in the mid-2000s. Now, I actually thought Rambo 4 was a pretty decent send-off for one of Stallone's most iconic roles. Yeah, it was kinda light on story, but the action scenes were great, and Stallone proved he could still kick ass despite his age. The ending brought the character full circle, providing a fitting resolution to his storyline. He'd made peace with his past, and finally returned home after spending most of his life wandering the world, ready to live out his autumn years in peace. But Sly just couldn't leave this one alone. Last year they announced Rambo was coming back for one final outing. And I have to admit, I was foolishly optimistic about it at first. Stallone's matured a great deal in the past 15 years, both as an actor and as a writer. He's managed to bring an awareness and sensibility to his stories and characters without sacrificing what made them so vital and compelling in the first place. And if this was going to be Rambo's last outing, then I was pretty sure he'd pull out all the stops and really give the guy the kind of epic, poignant, heroic send-off that he deserved. <laughs> wow, I was fucking wrong. Drink them if you've got them, gentlemen, because you're going to need them for this review. So Last Blood kicks off on a ranch in Arizona with a guy played by Sylvester Stallone who happens to be called Rambo. I say this because this character bears almost no resemblance to the Rambo from the previous movies. This guy is sociable, talkative, clean cut and easy going. He lives with some old Mexican lady whose name I totally can't remember, but it doesn't really matter because she means fuck all to the plot anyway. And he spends his days digging a big network of tunnels underneath his ranch. Why? Because the plot needs the final battle to happen there, I guess. 
He's also become a kind of surrogate parent to a teenager named Gabriella. The Rambo imposter saved Gabriella from her abusive father when she was a kid, but now she's growing up and getting ready to go off to college, even though she claims she doesn't know what she wants to do there. Well, that's gonna make for an awkward induction day. I'm pretty sure you have to pick a course before you start college, then you can start cutting classes and drinking yourself into oblivion. Anyway, Gabriella's managed to track down her real dad in Mexico, and she wants to go and meet him, but the Rambo imposter tells her he's an evil asshole and that she should stay away from him. So she agrees not to go, but then she changes her mind the next day and leaves anyway. Uh... So she gets to Mexico and finds her real dad, and he's like, fuck off, I never wanted you anyway. Wow, what a fascinating character he is, can't wait to hear more from this guy. So Gabriella gets all sad, and then her friend suggests they go out drinking, because apparently that will clear her head. Now take it from someone who knows, my friends. Drink will do many things for you. It'll get you into fights, it'll make you a better driver, it'll turn you into an eloquent and insightful YouTube reviewer, and it'll make you think it's a good idea to have sex with a fat girl named Tracy. But one thing it won't do is clear your head. And let's be honest, emotionally unstable teenage girls combined with large amounts of alcohol isn't exactly a winning combination. Anyway, they go to some nightclub and Gabriella gets drugged and taken hostage by a Mexican prostitution cartel. Meanwhile, the Rambo imposter is fucking around in his tunnels again, waiting for the plot to get going, when he notices that Gabriella hasn't come back. So he goes over the border to Mexico and tracks down her dad for information. Now I have to admit, I was intrigued by this development. Maybe these two men would be forced to work together to get her back. Maybe we'd learn some interesting revelations about her dad that would cast his previous actions in a whole new light. Like maybe he was involved with the cartels and he pushed Gabriella away so she wouldn't fall into a life of crime like him. Maybe over the course of the movie, he'd come to the realization that he really did care about her, ultimately redeeming himself by sacrificing his life to protect the daughter he barely knew. So many storytelling possibilities with this guy. But nah, the Rambo imposter tells him he's a dick and then he leaves, and we never see him again. What the fuck? Did a kindergartner write this script? Anyway, next he tracks down the guy who drugged Gabriella and tortures him for information, which leads him to the hideout of the cartel. But then he gets spotted because he stands outside their building in plain sight like a fucking plank of wood. So they surround him and beat the shit out of him. Nice one, Rambo imposter. Really showing those decades of special forces experience at recon, concealment and guerrilla warfare. But then a kindly plot device shows up and nurses him back to health. She's a journalist who sister sister got murdered by the cartel, and she helps him because the script needs it to happen. But it does prompt a few questions, such as, why are you helping this total stranger? This guy could be literally anyone. Just because he's an enemy of the cartel doesn't make him good or trustworthy. You know absolutely nothing about him. Why are you letting him into your home? What if he wakes up and robs you, or murders you in your sleep? Now, you might think her being a journalist would have some kind of purpose in the story. Like, maybe she uses the Rambo imposter to help expose the cartel to the world, or makes a deal with him in exchange for information. Maybe she'd become jaded and cynical, but the Rambo imposter's determination helps her to understand there are still good people in this world. Nah, characters are more like disposable commodities in this script. They serve one purpose, and only one, and then they're gone. Also, just out of curiosity, why did the cartel leave him alive in the first place? You know he's just gonna come back later and... Ah, never mind. So the Rambo imposter goes back to the hideout and kills a bunch of people with a fucking axe and saves Gabriella. But instead of getting her to a hospital, he decides to go for a nice leisurely drive back to his ranch. And he starts monologuing bullshit for about five straight minutes to keep her awake. And I kid you not, it was probably the most confusing five minutes of my life. Well, apart from that massage parlor in Thailand, honestly, I thought they were women. I couldn't make out a fucking word of what the guy was saying. Literally all I heard during that entire scene was... <clears throat> But anyway, Gabriella gets bored and dies. So the Rambo imposter goes into revenge mode and tells the old Mexican woman at his ranch to piss off. 
and she drives right out of the movie, never to be seen again. Well, what an interesting and compelling character arc she went through. Then he goes all the way back to Mexico and uses journalist lady to find the cartel leaders. Anyway, I think you can guess where this is all leading. The Rambo imposter leads the cartel back to his ranch, where he lures them into his tunnels and kills them all with a variety of homemade traps, most of which are far more dangerous and less efficient than just shooting them with a gun. And of course, he saves the leader for last. Will there be some kind of epic fist fight to the death in this movie? Nah, he just pins him to a wall with a bunch of arrows, and I'm not kidding, he literally cuts the guy's heart out of his chest and holds it up in front of him like this is some cheesy 1980s horror movie. Then he has a nice sit down in his rocking chair, and the movie ends with an absolutely obnoxious narration from Stallone about how he's gonna keep fighting to save the memories of the people he's lost. And that's the plot for Rambo Last Blood. You know, for a movie that barely reaches 90 minutes, the writing in this film is unbelievably flabby. Everywhere you look there's redundant plot threads that go absolutely nowhere. Like Gabriella's real father having basically nothing to do with the story except to be a total dick for a few minutes and then disappear. Or her grandmother who does nothing more than spout a bunch of expedition before the Rambo imposter tells her to piss off. Or the journalist who never actually does any journalism, which kind of makes you wonder why she was even given that profession in the first place. Or the Rambo imposter taking pills to help with his PTSD, but then he stops taking them and it makes absolutely no difference to his behaviour or his abilities. Then there's the shit that just straight up makes no sense at all, like how the Rambo imposter was spotted by like a dozen locals before he got anywhere near the cartel's hideout first time around, but then when he goes back again later, he's totally fine because because the plot says so. Or how he spent years digging a massive underground tunnel network beneath his ranch for absolutely no reason, because even this dumbass script can't think of a viable reason for anyone to do such a thing. Or the fact that the tunnel system is wired with explosives that allow him to collapse the entire thing any time he wants, which totally negates the point of setting traps or killing cartel soldiers himself. Or how the cartel can't seem to figure out that Rambo is responsible when their brothel gets hit and the only person missing is that guy girl that he's been looking for. Or the implication that this will be Rambo Imposter's last stand, but then the film totally pussies out and has him ride off into the sunset as if he's going to go on to further adventures, which totally undermines the idea that he's reached the end of his character arc. You know, it's amazing to me that a story so short, dumb and simplistic can have so many holes and problems. The entire thing feels like a 15 year old kid watched a couple of low budget 80s action films, got all fired up and spent one weekend hammering out this script, and then they slapped the Rambo name on it and went straight into production. Which brings me along to another point, this is a Rambo film in name only. When you get right down to it, this movie is nothing but a bland, unimaginative kidnap revenge thriller on the Mexican border, dealing with none of the themes the series is known for, with a generic protagonist who could be absolutely anyone. This guy bears no resemblance to the troubled, angry, lethal Rambo that I used to know. He's gullible and trusting when he has no reason to be. He's a family man with an adopted daughter, which is totally out of character. He makes dumb mistakes and gets his ass kicked. And worst of all, he's always talking! Rambo was always a man of few words, the kind of guy who watched and listened and preferred to let his fists do the talking. When he did speak, it was usually blunt, direct and impactful. I'm coming to get you. Don't push it. Don't push it, I'll give you a war you won't believe. Mission. Live for nothing, or die for something. But now you just can't shut the guy up. He's always spouting dumb, derivative threats that no actual human being would ever say, or growling out endless monologues where you have no idea what he's saying or why. The supporting cast are basically cardboard cutouts masquerading as people. None of them have even a hint of nuance, depth or personality. The primary antagonist has nothing in the way of charisma or menace, and never presents the slightest threat to Rambo. And they're all played by mediocre, forgettable actors who 
you look embarrassed by the ridiculous dialogue they have to work with. But Drinker, you enthrallingly unconventional intellectual I hear you say, surely you realise this is a Rambo film, and looking for deep characterization or strong performances here is like looking for a Sarah Silverman routine that's actually funny. Well, theoretical straw man, normally I'd agree with you, but Last Blood has done everything in its power to not be a typical Rambo movie. It wants to be like First Blood, a slow-paced, character-driven thriller leading up to an explosive, action-packed finale. That's the hill it chose to die on, and die it does. Not with a bang, but with a pathetic whimper. Even Stallone himself looks kind of bored and indifferent this time around, like he knows the script is totally shit and decided to just phone it in so he could get it over with as quickly as possible. Which is kind of weird when you consider he wrote the thing. Ultimately then, Last Blood reminds me of the low effort, low budget, limited release crap that people like Bruce Willis now churn out several times a year. A rushed and dirty movie that relies entirely on nostalgia and name recognition instead of the glorious final chapter for one of the most iconic characters in all of cinema. And I guess that's the final nail in the coffin of rage and betrayal for me. This isn't supposed to be just another action movie that an aging star phones in to make a quick profit. It's Rambo. It's his last ever outing. His swan song. The spectacular last stand in his epic career. A movie that deserved to be so much more than this dumb, boring, ludicrous, farcical travesty. What do you say, John? Fuck him. No, John, fuck this movie. Anyway, that's all I have for today. Go away now!